Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm going to show you how to put together the X-Carve. Now two things really quick. This is a pre-production machine, so there are some things on it that may look a little bit different than the final version. And number two, this is not supposed to be a full step-by-step -step video. Inventables has a whole series of videos about every little part that you put together. This is just to show you the process of building it. Here's the whole kit straight out of the box. First we'll make the X carriage. You start out with some bolts and then aluminum spacers and then smooth idlers. These are going to hold the belts later on. You add two of these and then you start on the V-wheels. The V-wheels are done about the same way. It's a bolt with a washer, a V-wheel, and a nut. You'll add several of these and some of them use an eccentric nut, which is just kind of an offset. You'll see it. Make sure that's turned the right way. Then you add the motor with just four screws and then finally you screw on the clip for the drag chain and then the terminal blocks. For the end plates, you want to just do the smooth idlers just like before and the V-wheels. It's a really similar process and you use all the same components, you just have to make sure you get them in the right place and use the right type of nuts. The eccentric nuts are used to adjust the placement of these wheels later on in the process just by turning the nut. Do the same process for both end plates, making sure to mirror one to the other. Then you'll attach a motor to each end plate using a bolt, a washer, and a nut. Each motor gets a pulley added to it, which is held in place by some really tiny retaining screws. The left plate gets a drag chain end, and both get a terminal block. This part was the most tedious for me and the most work. You have to tap the end of the maker slide using some self-tapping screws. Adding some WD-40 definitely helps, but it's still just manual labor that you have to do. Once you get those tapped, you can add them to the end plates and then slide on your X-carriage. Add two insertion nuts to the back slide and then add the other end. These self-tapping screws are a Torx bit, which helps a little bit, but it's still just a lot of work, and I found that a ratchet helped quite a bit. For the Y-axis, you add an end plate to a single piece of maker slide. Now slide it through the V-wheels, but before you put on the back plate, you want to add two insertion nuts. Then you just screw on the back plate and do the exact same for the other side of the machine. There's a smaller aluminum extrusion that you use to reinforce the x-axis. Add insertion nuts into the slot and then use screws to hold it to the end plates. Then do the same thing for the back side. The belts come on a roll so you cut down three equal sections. You feed it over a pulley, under a smooth idler, and then add a clip to each end. Each clip is attached to an insertion nut. Pull one of them all the way to the end and tighten it down. The other end is a little bit different. You also screw it to the insertion nut, but you use a longer screw to manage how tight it is to the end plate. Then you can just turn the nut to adjust the tightness of each belt. Once you've got it where you want it, just tighten it down into the insertion nut. The Z carriage starts by adding a bearing to a plate, holding it in place with a couple of screws. Then you have to tap a smaller piece of maker slide and attach it to the plate. This piece gets attached to the system by adding a couple of more insertion nuts to the X carriage. Add them on the top, slide it down and tighten them up, and then add two more into the bottom. This is a little bit tricky because it's kind of hard to get to, but once you get them in place you can tighten them easily enough. There's a threaded rod and a Delrin nut which is used to raise and lower the tool. Thread it on by hand and then put it in a drill. Run it up and down several times. This loosens up the threads on the inside of the plastic nut and makes it a lot easier to move. Add another nut, stick it up through the plate, and then tighten the nuts into place. Once you've tightened both of the nuts, add a pulley to the top by tightening its retaining screws. You're going to add another pulley to the end of the motor and feed it up through the back. Make sure to add the belt before you attach the motor, but once it's tightened in place, you can raise and lower the pulleys to get them the same height. For all of the motors, you're going to shorten the wires and then strip the end of each one. Then you'll attach each one of those ends to a terminal block. You'll cut a few pieces of extension cable, which go into the terminal block, and then through the machine. You do this so that both Y motors can be run at the same time. And when you twist the wire together, you're going to switch two of them because you want the motors to run in opposite directions. Put them in the terminal block, and then add another extension to the bottom of that that you run out to your controller. You're going to do about the same thing to the back of the Z and the X. There's also a pair of wire for the spindle, but I didn't show that here. 
The drag chain clips are added on to a couple of different places on the machine. The drag chain keeps the wires safe and keeps them out of your way. You have to remove some of the screws, put on the clip, put the screws back in. Make sure you get them good and tight. The easiest way to do the wires is to tape them up, feed them through the drag chain, which is just plastic, and then it snaps on to the ends that you've added. Feed it through the other side, attach that one, and then attach it to the front of your machine. Now all your wiring is running through drag chain and coming out one place. It's a good idea to mark the wires so you know which one goes to which motor. You strip the ends and then you just slide them right into the terminals on the motor shield. The fan is added by twisting it together with a short piece of extension cable. You add this to the terminals on the motor shield. The other end of this cable is going to go into the green clip that goes into the front of the power supply. Your spindle wire also goes into this clip. The Z carriage is assembled about the same way as the end plates and the X carriage. There's V wheels with standoffs and they're bolted on. Like before, just make sure that you put the eccentric nuts on one side and loosen them up so you can easily slide it onto the Z axis. You add a couple of small screws to the front so that you can tighten down around the spindle when you add it. Once those are in place, you slide it onto the Z axis and then add screws into the Delrin nut. Slide your spindle down from the top and tighten those screws in place. The waste board is really easy to set up. You just drive in the threaded inserts with a hex driver. Then you just slide it in and tighten it down with three insertion nuts, both on the front and on the back. Once that's in place, it's just a matter of adding a really cool sticker. Then it's all finished. Now this is the first carve I did with the machine right after I finished it. I did no squaring, no leveling, anything. And the carve actually turned out really well. So admittedly, I have not done much carving on this yet, but the fact that I could put it together and immediately cut something was pretty awesome. When I built my Shapeoko 2, there was a whole series of squaring and leveling and all this stuff I had to do just to get it to work. So this was a big improvement in that department. Also, even though I was filming this one, it went together a lot quicker than my Shapeoko 2 simply because there are fewer parts. They cut down the number of parts by like 50%. So whereas before the X carriage was two plates with a bunch of spacers and all the stuff you had to put together, now it's one big piece, which makes it faster to put together and just more rigid. Also on this machine, I got the larger motors instead of the smaller ones that I had on the Shapeoko, and you can tell the difference. The machine's a lot more powerful. So my recommendation is if you're gonna be doing any serious work with the machine, go ahead and get the larger motors from the get-go. The only problems I've had with the machine so far are really tiny. One, the spindle is a lot louder even though it's just as powerful as the quiet spindle that I have on my Shape Oko. I really enjoy the quietness of that one so it'd be nice to have a quiet one here but I can upgrade that at some point. The other thing is on my Shape Oko 2 I added a hand crank for the z-axis and that way if there's no power to the machine you can turn that to move the spindle up and down which is really handy for getting set up. In this configuration I'd have to figure out how to make something that would work there. Not a huge deal but it's a nice little convenience feature that the Shape Oko 2 has that this one doesn't have yet. Also another thing I love about this machine is the fact that it's all black. I know that's just the way it looks, but it looks a lot more professional and it kind of looks like the CNC that Batman would use. So there's that. I'll have some more videos soon about comparing this to the Shape Oko 2 as far as performance and stuff. I'll do some side by sides, but for now I hope this video gave you an idea of how easy and quick it is to put this machine together. If you have any questions about it, leave it in the comments below or at iliketomakestuff.com. And really, honestly, the best place to go for answers about this is inventables.com. Their customer service people are awesome and they love to answer questions, so go check them out. I've got a lot more stuff for you to check out. CNC, project videos, podcast, all sorts of stuff right there. You can find me on all the social networks. I love making these videos, and if you'd like to help me make more of them and make them better, Patreon is the best way for you to support me. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.